Hello. What do you need? Для нормально общающихся. То есть уровень B2. Words 351 to 400. So this level is for you if your English is about B2 level. With нормально общающихся. But you want to speak excellent English. You want to reach C1 level. These words should help you to do that. So, let's go. Word number 351. Braka. Godovshina is an anniversary. Next year is the 50th anniversary of our marriage. Anniversary. Let's have a look at what other words sometimes come after anniversary. Anniversary, we need collocates. Let's see what nouns are often used after anniversary. So you can talk about the, anni the anniversary of someone's death. Uh, you can talk about the anniversary of someone's birth. Uh, you can talk about the anniversary of September 11th. Or the September 11th attacks, when there were terrorist attacks in New York. Um, but also here you can see the kind of parties you can have. So you can have... An anniversary celebration, an anniversary party, an anniversary dinner, an anniversary gift. Give an anniversary gift. Um, so, some different things you can do on anniversaries. Next. Ribionok bil mnya palkai. The child beat me with a stick. Now... I think this word is, is interesting because beat is beat. Now, I think this is a coincidence. Sofpadienia. I don't think these words have the same root. Kordien. Maybe they do. Um, anyway, it's, it's a good way to... Um, it's a good way to analyse how Russian e is different to English. E. Beat. Beat, beat, beat. In English, we get more of a pause, I think. Beat. The child beat me. Beat me. Whereas in Russian, beat, 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 beat. There's not much of a pause between eat, eat, eat. But beat, beat. So, the main difference here, I think, is this pause between the vowel and the consonant, the child beat me, beat, smile as well, beat me with a stick. Zaklucionny will zabit do smierci. The prisoner was beaten to death. So beat is an irregular verb, it's beat, beat, beaten, третья форма. So the prisoner was beaten, was beaten. Okay, let's look at the next one. У меня слишком много работы, и я не справляюсь. Я не справляюсь. I'm not coping. I've got too much work, and I'm not coping. Cope. Coping. Um, очень важно в этом слове все равно есть звук в. Cope, 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 coping. Но потом пауза перед глухим п. Это не коп, а к. К, как будто мы говорим cut. Как будто мы говорим cut, к. Но потом закрываем рот. Коу, коу, коу. Cope, cope, coping, coping. I'm not, I'm not 
coping. Ну, если он хорошо справился со всеми заданиями, можно сказать He coped well with all the tasks. He coped well. He coped with the tasks. Next. Мы были прямо очень голодны. Прямо очень. We were extremely hungry. Extremely. Вроде на русском нельзя сказать экстремально голодные. <laughs> Sounds weird in Russian. Anyway, uh, what are the words, what are the adjectives are often used after extremely? Let's have a quick look. Hmm. You can say yes. This is... Information is extremely important. If it's extremely, we stress, we do, we say extremely, extremely, and yet, you show много я, extremely, <laughs> because с, т, ш, р, и, Y. Six sounds in one syllable. Extremely important. Extremely. Stretch it. Extremely important. Extremely. That's an extremely difficult question. Prices are extremely high. This material is extremely rare. Прямо очень редкие. Etc. И так далее. So, extremely. Next one. Я хочу стать телеведущей. When I was younger, I wanted to become a телеведущей. What is it in English? I want to become a TV host. You can also use the word presenter. I want to become a TV presenter. Um, but a host is somebody who hosts a program. Um, but you can also host parties. I wonder what nouns we can find here after, after the word hosting. Ah, uh, that doesn't... Ah, uh, hosting companies, that's about websites. Because when you have a website, you need a web host to host your website. So many of these are to do with um, websites. Uh, but you can also find the phrase hosting events. So that's мероприятия, uh, hosting events. You can find um, hosting parties, yeah, вечеринки. Uh, Um, hosting Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is this uh, American, like, early Christmas in November. It's a big American festival, hosting Thanksgiving. Um, you can talk about, uh, what else? Hosting meetings. A meeting needs a host. Um, and please remember, when you say host, it's got a dub. It's, it's like cope. It's ha, ha, wa, wa. Host. host, 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 hosting parties. Okay, the next one. Я получил водительские права в прошлом году. I got my driving license last year. A driving license. And let's look at some other licenses. Uh... Interestingly, in America, I guess they call it a driver license. In Britain, we call it a driving license. But you can also get a business license, a marriage license. I think a marriage license is for the person who conducts the wedding ceremony, not for the people who are married. But I, I could be wrong. I think it's an American thing. A hunting license, so that's a hota. A fishing license, that's ribalka. Uh, a software license, 
to use some kinds of software, you need a license. So, license. Licenzia o prava. Next. Я поймал свою сеть трех маленьких рыбишек. I caught three little fish in my net. So, сеть is a net. Um, but if you want to talk about like социальные сети, um, then the word is network. Um, у меня вот сеть друзей, связей. That's a network. Телекоммуникационные сети, telecommunication networks. A net is very specifically uh, something made of string uh, with this form. Um, so what are the nets? We can talk in, in basketball. A basketball net. In football. A football net. Uh, because like a fishing net, they have this special form. Net. Next. Стены очень толстые. Толстые стены. Of course, people can be fat. But walls can't be fat. Walls can be thick. The walls are very thick. Thick walls. There's also a nice phrase, actually. She's thick-skinned. Tolstokorzy. It means she doesn't get offended. If you're thick-skinned, then even if people criticize you, they say negative things about you, you don't take offense. You're thick-skinned. Uh, so, thick. Tolstoy. Izmierte tolshinu stieny. Measure the thickness of the wall. Thickness. Oops. And we also use the word thick to talk about liquids. So, gustoy. Этот соус получается очень густым. This sauce is very thick. Remember. Thick. You need to open your mouth. Thick. Thick. Not thick, thick. With if your mouth is closed, it will sound wrong. Maybe it will sound like sick. No, mouth open. Thick, thick. It should be easier to put your tongue between your teeth because your mouth is open. Thick, thick. Uh, and there's a verb. Подождите, пока соус загустеет. Wait for the sauce to thicken. Thicken. Next one. Oh, it's another th word. It's difficult to pronounce. Я не воспринял их угрозу всерьез. Угроза. I didn't take their threat seriously. This th sound. Threat. Th, th, you need your lips forward. Th, 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 and then straight back. Threat. 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 I didn't take their threat seriously. Threat. Они угрожали убить меня. They threatened to kill me. Threatened. Threatened. Remember, we have a n before a d, so we stretch it. Threatened. Threatened to kill me. Threatened. Another dirzite n. Threatened. Threatened to kill me. And number 360, the last word in the first set of 10. Я надевал этот костюм на свою свадьбу. I wore this suit at my wedding. Wedding, свадьба. Pronunciation, wedding. Try to hold the w, wedding. You can already open your mouth 
but then you close your lips in front of your teeth. Look, my mouth, my mouth is open. Ooh, ooh, wedding. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, 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 it's open. Wet, 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 wedding. Wet. So it's not wedding. Wet, wet, wedding. 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 Okay, so that is the first set of ten. Now you can press pause and um, take a little break, review the words, and as always, if you have access to the full version of the course, then there are tasks to do on my website, hopkinsenglish.com, to practice these words and really get them into your head. So do the task, then come back and watch the next part of the lesson. Okay, part two. Она обвинила меня в лжи. Обвинять. She accused me of lying. So we, we have two words for обвинять, обвинить. There's the word to blame and to accuse. Um, to blame is about vina. Cha vina. So for example, she blamed me for breaking her computer. So, and that решила, что это моя вина. That's to blame. She accused me of breaking her computer. That's обвинение. I think you did it deliberately. Um, so, обвинение, обвинять в смысле обвинение, to accuse. Обвинять в смысле вина, to blame. To accuse, to blame. Pronunciation, accuse. Don't forget the wa. Accuse. Accused. She accused me of lying. Accuse. The next one. Она встретилась лицом к лицу. Она встретилась лицом к лицу со своим обвинителем. She confronted her accuser. Accuser. Remember the word. Accuser. Accuser. And there is also the noun, обвинение, accusations. Она отрицала все их обвинения. She denied all their accusations. Accusations. Next one. У меня есть ли вас трудное задание? I have a difficult challenge for you. So, how can you say challenge so that it doesn't sound like Russian challenge? So, challenge. I don't open my mouth. Challenge, challenge, challenge. But challenge, cha, challenge, cha, cha. I open my mouth. It's a challenge, cha, cha, challenge. And the ch, I would say, is really quite soft. It's like saying um, ch with a sh afterwards. Challenge, shas, shas, challenge, sha, challenge. So there's more sh, sh in it. Challenge. I have a difficult challenge for you. A challenge. Champion. Победил претендента. The champion. Where is my voice typing gone? The champion. The champion defeated the challenger. Ch challenger. Lots of sh in challenger. The challenger. А это была непростая задача. There is also the adjective challenging. It was a challenging task. Every time, try to pronounce it. 
with this bit of your tongue, the ch, ch, challenging, ch, ch, ch challenging task. Lots of ch in this sound, challenging. Okay, the next one. Мне не нравится современное искусство. Современное. I don't like contemporary art. So I like this word because it has ruri at the end. Ruri. People often think, oh, it's so difficult to say ruri. Ruri, 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 ruri. It is quite difficult, but if you put your lips into the duck position, it's easier. Ruri, ruri. Contemporary. Pururi, pururi, pururi. Contemporary art. I wonder if there are other words that end ruri. I think there are. Let's have a quick look. Oops. I got that wrong. Let's have a look. So the top one is library. Literary. Temporary. Contrary. Arbitrary. Itinerary. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of ruri words. Ruri, 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 ruri. And if you don't put your lips forward, ruri, 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 it's difficult. But ruri is easier. Contemporary. Library. Literary. Temporary. Contrary. Arbitrary, itinerary, ruri, 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 lips forward, lips forward. Okay, next one. Эти отчеты должны были быть представлены вчера. Был deadline. Вчера. These reports were due yesterday. Due. In American English, they were due. They were due yesterday. They were due, due Yesterday. At Chira will deadline. They were due yesterday. So due it's always about srok or deadline or ожидая моя время. Because here они должны прибыть с минуты на минуту. They are due to arrive any moment now. So we use this phrase due to speak about some kind of договоренность, что что-то будет, что-то по плану. Вот по плану, due. It's due to happen. We talk about the due date of a baby. We ask, when is the baby due? And that's срок. Какой, um, когда ребенок родится? What's the due date? When is the baby due? All right, next. Я много выпил, а на следующий день почувствовал себя ужасно. Следующий. I drank a lot, and then I felt terrible the following day. Try to say following. Try to hold the f. Following. The following day. The following. Next. Надеюсь, завтра дождя не будет. You know this word. Hopefully... It won't rain tomorrow. It's quite difficult to pronounce. Hopefully. Firstly, you need to start with your mouth open. Hope. Not hope. Hope. Ha, ha, hope. Don't forget the wa. Hope. And then flee. 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 Hopefully. Flee. You need to move very quickly from foot to la. Flee. Hopefully. Hopefully. It won't rain tomorrow. Next word. Я работаю в индустрии досуга. 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 I don't know where the stress is. Never mind. In English. I work in the leisure industry. Americans say. I work in the leisure industry. So Americans say leisure. We say leisure. Le le leisure. The leisure industry. Um, and you can also use the word leisure to talk about отдых. Курорт предлагает множество различных вариантов отдыха. The resort offers many different leisure options. Leisure 
досуг or отдых. But leisure, it's always active. If, you, if it's leisure, then you're, you're doing something. Lying in your bed, it's not really leisure. Uh, next. Я молюсь каждый день. Про молитва. I pray every day. So, молиться is to pray. Pr try to get lots of pray. Pray every day. And the noun, молитва, is a prayer. I said a prayer. So, although we write prayer, the pronunciation is like pair, pair. Or we could write it like this. P rare, rare, hriedki, prayer. It's the e e sound. Prayer, air, prayer, air, prayer, prayer. I said a prayer. The next one. Мы хотим снизить риск заражения. Снизить. We want to reduce the risk of infection. Reduce. Reduce the risk. And you can also say, цена была снижена на 20%. The price was reduced by 20%. What other things? Uh, what other things were reduced? So let's do B reduced collocates before nouns. Let's have a look. Uh, costs were reduced. That's about zatraty costs. Uh, the rate was reduced. Usually that's the interest rate. That's about stavka. Um, the deficit was reduced. That's pra deficit. Uh, the risk was reduced. Urivin riska. So snizit to reduce. And 370. Zavtra u menya smiana. I have a night shift tomorrow. I think it's two words, not one word. A night shift. Let's have a quick look at other shifts. Um, so, something shift. So, night shift is the first one. Um, you can also do a, a day shift, a day shift, or a night shift, uh, or an evening shift, or a morning shift. That's about smiana. But here you can also see the phrase a paradigm shift or a policy shift. What could that be? Um, that's because to shift can also be like to move something. So I can't shift this box. I can't move it. I can't shift it. And a paradigm shift is when you change from one paradigm to another paradigm. A policy shift is when the government changes from one policy, politica, to another policy, politica. That's a policy shift. And you can also talk about shifting gears, that skoristi in the car. Sometimes we call this thing the, sh the shifter, to go from first gear to second gear to third gear. So shift has these two meanings, smiana, but also to move from one to another. Another. That is the last word in this section of the lesson. So press pause, do the tasks, repeat the words, and then watch the next part of the lesson. Let's move on. Number 371. I'm really anxious about my exam tomorrow. I'm anxious. In the word anxious, we have the A-N-K sound. Ank, ank, ank. Tip of the tongue, behind the teeth. 
anxious. I'm anxious about my exam tomorrow. Anxious. I know it's very strange spelling, but uh, you just need to know how to say it really. Anxious about collocates nouns. What are we going to get? I'm anxious about the future. I'm anxious about the economy. I'm anxious about money. I'm anxious about this situation. Trevoga, Valnuyus. And Trevojnost. Yastradaya o Trevojnost. I suffer from anxiety. So anxious, we said ank, anxious. But anxiety, we say ang. Anxiety, anxiety. So in anxious, it's an ink ink sound, but in anxiety, it's a ng ng sound, like in sang. Ang ng 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 anxiety, anxiety. Okay, next. Эта вода может вылечить с проблемой с кожей. This water can cure skin problems. Now, sometimes in English we have a different word for what in Russian is совершенный и несовершенный вид. So, лечит in English is to treat. But вылечит is to cure. So, they treated my illness, they treated my illness, and the treatment worked. Я вылечился. I am cured. Вылечился. So they treated me and now I am cured. Лечили, лечили, и вот я вылечился. I am cured. Americans say cured, cured. Like you're a little bit like you're saying QR code. <laughs> Cured, but we say cured. Cured, cured, cured. I'm cured. And od mojego состояния нет лекарства. I don't think лекарство is the best translation, but there is no cure for my condition. Not нельзя вылечить. Um, there is no cure. It's a chronic condition. No cure. Next one. Я пишу вам, чтобы узнать о ваших юридических услугах. I am writing to inquire about your legal services. Inquire. It's a formal way to say ask or to request information. To inquire is to request information. Information. So, никто не ответил на мой запрос. This means запрос информации. Nobody responded to my inquiry. Inquire, inquiry. Next one. В тренажерном зале есть хорошее оборудование. Оборудование – equipment. There is good equipment in the gym. Remember, QU is k w equipment. Equip quit. Pronounce it with an open mouth. Qu qu. Not qw. Qw quip quip. Look, my top lip comes down. Qw qw over my teeth. Equipment. Not creep. Quip. Quip. Make your lip come down. Equipment in the gym. Good equipment in the gym. And equipment is also снаряжение. 
В этом магазине вы можете купить альпинистское снаряжение. You can buy mountaineering equipment in this store. Equipment. And the next one. Тренажерный зал хорошо оборудован. The gym is well equipped. Because there is a verb to equip. To equip. So the gym is well equipped. It has good equipment. Next one. У пациента была высокая температура. The patient had a high fever. So often it, we say someone's got a temperature if their temperature is a little bit higher than normal. And we say they've got a fever if it's much higher than normal. So we use different words. A high temperature, I don't know if it's 37. A fever, if it's, I don't know, 38.5, 39, then, then, it's a, then it's a fever. A fever. Next one. Я забыл свой пароль. Whoops. I'm sure you know this word. You must have seen it many times. I've forgotten my password. Just remember, password is a compound noun. It's one word made from two nouns. So the stress is always on the first word. Password. Password. So try to pronounce word in I call it croaky voice. Don't use your full voice when you say word. Password. Can you hear? Password. Password. Like that. Password. Password. In the south of England, it's password. Pass. Password. But I say password. Okay, the next one. 377. Pizaji na yugi franci prekrasni. The scenery in the south of France is beautiful. Pizage, scenery. Try to hold the sun. Sea. Scene. Lots of s, lots of y. Scenery. Sea, sea, scenery. In the south of France is beautiful. Это очень живописный маршрут. This is a very scenic route. So if the scenery is nice, you can say, oh, it's very scenic. What else? What else can be scenic, I wonder? Scenic. Scenic route is number one. A scenic drive. A scenic river. Uh, a scenic trail. So trail is if you're walking or maybe riding a bicycle. That can be a trail. But uh, if it's a road, it's a car, scenic road, scenic drive, scenic route. Americans say route, a scenic route. Next one. Это хорошая почва для сельского хозяйства. Почва. This is good soil. For agriculture. Sometimes we use the word soil. You can also use the word earth. This is good earth. Um, and Chernozyom is black earth. So, is the best soil for growing wheat. Uh, that's pšenica, wheat. Black earth, chernozyom, is the best soil for growing wheat. There you go, soil. Uh, next. Может, перевяжем его бичевкой? Shall we tie it up with string? I think I talked about rope in another lesson. Rope is верёвка, that is thick, probably more than one centimetre in diameter. That's rope. If it's less than one centimeter, then it's string. So if we're talking about virovka, it depends on the thickness. Thick virovka is rope. Thin virovka is string. 
Next. Мы окружены врагами. We are surrounded by enemies. This middle syllable, round. Your lips really need to work when you pronounce it. Ru ru ru, ra a a, wu wu wu. Rounded, surrounded. Don't rush. Pronounce it slowly. Surrounded, surrounded, surrounded by enemies. В этой обстановке я чувствую себя как дома. В этой обстановке можно сказать I feel at home in these surroundings. Surroundings. Обстановка. And that is the last word in this section. So, press pause, take a break, have a drink, because if you're repeating everything, then like me, I guess your throat is a bit sore, uh, and then continue with the lesson. But it's it's really important to take regular breaks. You'll remember better. So take a break and then come back and watch the next part. Moving on to number 381. He всегда носит на шее золотую цепочку. He always wears a gold chain on his neck. Chain. Again, another ch sound. Try to make it really like sh -sh -sh -sh. Try to use a sh in your chain. Every time, sh. Chain on his neck. Ch. Chain. Chain on his neck. We also use chain to talk about сеть um, каких-то бизнесов. Uh, она владельца сети пекарен. She is the owner of a chain of bakeries. A chain. What else? I wonder what we're going to get here. Chain of nouns. Uh, and this is in the army. The chain of command. So that would be from like the, I don't know, the generals to the lieutenants to the next, to the next, to the next. That's the chain of command. We often talk about a chain of events. How one event was connected to the next event, to the next event, to the next event. That's a chain of events. Uh, you can talk about a chain of islands. That's uh, archipelag, I guess. Um, an archipelago. Uh, and, of course, chain of restaurants. A chain of stores. Shops. You can talk about a chain of logic. Logitska tsepochka. So as you can see, chain, siet, but also tsepochka. Sabaka bala prikovana tsepiu kvarotam tsep. You can also use the word chain. The dog was chained to the gate. Chained. Okay. Next. Природа бывает очень жестока. Nature is sometimes very cruel. Cruel. Try to pronounce a lot of what before you get to the l sound at the end. Cruel. Cruel. In fact, the l, we almost don't pronounce it. Cruel. Cruel. Lots of what, not so much l. Cruel. Now let's have a look what things can be cruel. So yeah, we often talk about a cruel joke. Not a cruel, that's something else. A cruel joke or a cruel hoax. So a hoax is a kind of joke. No, mystificatie, it's like a schema. Um, but also a joke at the same time. We talk about hoax callers. That's people who call to pretend to be somebody else, but not to steal, they're not machenniki, just to make a joke. So hoax callers. We also talk about uh, cruel irony. Ironia, 
cruel fate. Жестокая судьба. So, cruel. And there is a noun, cruelty. His cruelty shocked me. Жестокость потрясла меня. The next word. Я отправился в больницу на обследование. Обследование в больнице is... I went to the hospital for an examination. So, yes, you can do exams, examinations at school, but at school we usually call them exams. But in the hospital we call them examinations. So in the hospital you have examinations, in school you take exams. At university you take exams. It's it's the same word, but different contexts. Um, And the verb to examine can be used by doctors. The doctor examined me. But also in this context, улики были изучены детективами. The evidence was examined by detectives. Because to examine, ex- hold the z, examined, it's a nice stretchy sound, examined. And to examine is to look very closely at something. Next, не будь дураком. I think you know this word. Don't be a fool. So, a bit like cruel, lots of w, the same with fool. Lots of w. Don't just say fool. No, fool. Fool. Lots of w. Fool. And there's also an adjective. Я сделал кое-что очень глупое. I did something very foolish. That was a foolish thing to do. That was a foolish thing to say. Foolish. Foolish. The next word also begins with f. Картина в красивой деревянной раме. The picture is in a beautiful wooden frame. Frame. Hold the r. Frame. Frame. I wonder what nouns we often put before frame. So you can talk about a door frame. That's the, the, the sides of the door. A picture frame. That's definitely ramka. A window frame goes around the window, but also a time frame. So when we say what's the time frame, we mean, is it like, are we talking about a three month time frame to complete the project, a six month time frame, a 10 month time frame? What's the time frame for the project? Next one. При съемке этого видео ни одно животное не пострадало. No animals were harmed in the making of this video. Of course, it could be hurt. No animals were hurt. No animals were hurt. No animals were harmed. There's not a big difference here. Um, Это вредное вещество. This is a harmful substance. Those are hurtful words. So words can be hurtful, but a substance, it's just what can be harmful, because harm is about physically ущерб. Um, whereas hurt, it's all kinds of Usherb, all kinds of pain. So to hurt is to inflict pain and to harm is to inflict physical damage to a living thing. Um, because usually damage is for not living things and harm is for living things, usually. My car was damaged. Um... But my, I don't know, the, the 
uh, the, the dog was harmed. Uh, let's look at the next one. In fact, let's just check that theory because that might not actually be right. Be harmed. Let's look at what. Let's look at what can be harmed. And that should tell me if my theory is correct. Yeah, look. People were harmed. Children were harmed. Animals were harmed. That's a relief for me, actually. That's a relief. Of course, that was supposed to be on the previous page. Phew. So, yeah. Damage um, for non-living, harm for living things. Next. Из этой машины исходит ужасный запах. There is a horrible smell coming from that car. Oh, it's horrible. Oh, ужасный. A horrible smell. Uh, what else can be horrible? Uh, this is a this is an easy one. Oops. Horrible. Don't say what. Horrible. Open your mouth. Horrible. Horrible. We talk about a horrible person, a horrible situation, a horrible mistake. A horrible death, a horrible crime, a horrible tragedy. Lots of horrible things. Next one. У вас должна быть страховка, чтобы управлять автомобилем. Страховка. Insurance. You must have insurance to drive a car. Insurance. The stress is the second syllable. Insurance. Sh, sh, hold the sh. Insurance. Insurance insurance to drive a car your car must be insured next one ответ содержится в третьем абзаце абзац is a paragraph the answer is in the third paragraph paragraph make sure you get a er, er, not a re but paragraph paragraph in the third paragraph. And the next one is number 390. Многие резиденты выступают против предлагаемого строительства тюрьмы. Предлагаемый. Many residents are against the proposed construction of a prison. At the moment, it's only proposed. Это предлагаемое строительство. The proposed construction. Um, and we'll probably find lots of предлагаемые вещи here. So we can talk about the proposed changes to the law. Предлагаемые изменения. We can talk about a proposed amendment to the law. That's also изменения. Uh, we can talk about a proposed tax, предлагаемый налог, etc. So, proposed, and the noun is proposal. Я не знаю, почему они оттонили мое предложение. I don't know why they rejected my proposal. Remember, this is not like an, an offer, because an, my offer is я могу что-то сделать для вас. A proposal is, this is what we should do. So, proposal is an idea for everybody. An offer is something for me to do for you. В прошлом месяце он сделал предложение своей девушке is also a proposal. He proposed to his girlfriend last month. So when a man goes down on one knee with the ring and says, will you marry me? That is a proposal. That's he proposed to his girlfriend. And now she said yes. And now they are fiancés. So now they are невесты жених. And we say they are fiancés. And that is the last word in this section. Press pause. Take a little break. And then we'll do 
the last set of 10 in today's lesson. And this is the last set of 10. Эта рубашка не подходит для свадьбы. That shirt is not appropriate for a wedding. Не подходит. It's not appropriate. You can also say it's unsuitable. Appropriate, suitable. They're, they're very close in meaning. Его поведение было совершенно неуместным. His behavior was totally inappropriate. And the word inappropriate, it can also be used, I think, to mean adequately. Um, if you say, oh, that's, that's, t- that's totally inappropriate. Вот это неадекватное поведение. Неуместное. Um, so sometimes it's difficult to translate неадекватный because неадекватный is not inadequate. It's not. Um, sometimes inappropriate is a good way to translate неадекватный. Uh, let's look at number 392. Он облетел вокруг света на воздушном шаре. He flew around the world in a hot air balloon. So, шар is a balloon. A balloon. Um, yeah, you probably know that already. Remember the word. Balloon. 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 The next one. У него очень широкий кругозор. He is very broad-minded. So, широкие can be wide. I'm sure you know the word wide. The river is wide. The road is wide. But there's another word, broad, which is broad is like wide. To me, it feels like wide is широкие in, in one direction. But broad is, is широкие in, in many directions. <laughs> Broad-minded. And there's also the verb to broaden. Я хочу расширить во все стороны свой кругозор. I want to broaden my horizons. Broaden my horizons. Um, what words can often come after broad? Let's have a quick look. We often say a, a broad range, a broad range. It's in many directions, I guess. Um, but you can say wide range as well. Broad shoulders. He's got broad shoulders. Uh, we say that often as well. Um, anyway, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the jury, yes, присяжные пришли к выводу, что она виновна. The jury concluded that she was guilty. They concluded. Пришли к выводу. Because вывод, выводы, is conclusion. Conclusions. Каков ваш главный вывод? What is your main conclusion? Conclusion. Remember there's a ж in this word. Conclusion. There's also a wa. Conclu. Oi, oi, oi. Conclu. Woo, 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 woo. Z, 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 z. Conclusion. Conclusion. What's your main conclusion? Если доказательство было неубедительным, you can say, the evidence was inconclusive. One word, inconclusive. Conclusive, убедительный. It's conclusive, it leads to a firm conclusion. It's inconclusive, means it's hard, it does not point to a clear conclusion. Conclusive, inconclusive. This is an easy one, I'm sure you know this one. У нее кудрявые волосы. Вьющиеся, кудрявые, кудрявые волосы. 
She's got curly hair. Curly hair. <laughs> Can anything else be curly? I don't think so. Curly hair. What else? No, curly brown, curly red, curly... Oh, curly fries. You can get that's Kartoffel free. <laughs> curly fries. Um, and that Zavivayet Svojevolosi. She curls her hair. The other context when we use the word curl is like in football. You can curl the ball. For example, he curled the ball around the wall. So if you kick it and it goes mm, because of the spin that makes it curl round. So curl. Next one. Мой уровень владения английским языком вероятно средний. Средний уровень. In this context, you can use the word intermediate. My level of English is probably intermediate. Beginner. Intermediate, advanced. Uh, now, if you can understand everything that I'm saying, and many of these words are familiar, then your level of English is probably upper, intermediate. So, pretty good, pretty good. You're on your way to advanced. The next one, не перебивай меня. Don't interrupt me. Don't interrupt. The stress is at the end. Interrupt. Interrupt. But the uh is very short before the unvoiced p. Uh, uh, uh. So we do a long r. Interrupt me. Don't interrupt me. Interrupt. Next one. Oh, I think you know this word. Ribalka zapreshina. Everybody knows this word. Fishing is prohibited. Actually, maybe you know the word fishing is forbidden. It's forbidden. It's prohibited. Uh, these words have the same meaning, really. If I put this in here, prohibited nouns, we'll see what things are usually zapreshon there. We talk about, yeah, prohibited items. Prohibited weapons. I wonder if with forbidden we get more words or about the same number. Let's have a look. Which one's more common? Similar, yeah, but with forbidden the top item the top ones are Forbidden City. Forbidden fruit. Forbidden zone. So it's interesting, it seems like we use the word forbidden with places, a city, uh, a planet, a zone, whereas we use forbidden with uh, things, forbidden items, forbidden weapons, prohibited items, prohibited weapons. I said it wrong, sorry. Uh, let's look at the next one. 399, я книги. Краткое содержание is a summary. I read a summary of the book. Remember to stretch the s summary, s summary, to show that the stress is on the first syllable. A summary of the book. And there is also a verb to summarize. В своем заключении no. um, вы должны кратко изложить свои выводы. So you're writing an essay. You should end your essay with your conclusion. Выводы, заключения. Um, and in your conclusion, you should summarize your findings. So, kratka is lajit is to summarize, to summarize your ideas. And the last word, one that I'm sure you know, ya hranyu svai instrumenty v garaje. I keep my tools in the garage. That's the third all word. We've had cruel, we've had fool, and we've had tool in this lesson. In all of them, remember, lots of w. Cruel, fool, tools. Tools in the garage. And that is word number 400. There are 800 words in this block. 
So, we're halfway. If you have learned all 400, you're doing very well. And I really hope that you've started to notice that English is getting easier for you because these really are words that we use a lot. And so if you're very comfortable using them, it should make you feel comfortable in general uh, when using English. So I hope you enjoyed this lesson and I hope you'll join me soon for the next one. Bye.